Today we're going to be looking at the subject, Oh, What a Thing Fear Is. Our text is going to be 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 19 through 24. 1 Samuel 12, 19 through 24. While you're turning to 1 Samuel chapter 12, uh, let me just say that the notes to this Bible lesson can be found at settledinheaven.wordpress.com and again there on my blog Settled in Heaven you'll be looking for the blog posting entitled Oh What a Thing Fear Is. What we're going to be looking at this morning is some principles that we can apply to our life during the fearful times of our life. I know just speaking for myself, when you look out at the things that are taking place in our world today, between the economic problems and the political problems and the unrest over in the Middle East, all of the different natural disasters that have been taking place, the oil spill down south, you know, just all of these things. If you really concentrate on these things and think a whole lot about them, they can cause fear in your life. It seems like in today's time, fear can be a real issue for many people. Here in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 19 through 24, the Lord gives us some basic principles on how we can handle fear during the fearful times of our life. If you notice, let's go ahead and read these verses very quickly, then we'll get right into our lesson. 1 Samuel 12, 19 through 24. And all the people said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to the Lord your God, that we may not die, for we have added to all our sins the evil of asking a king for ourselves. Then Samuel said to the people, Do not fear. You have done all this wickedness, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside, for then you would go after empty things which cannot profit or deliver, for they are nothing. For the Lord will not forsake his people, for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord, and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. It's very important that we understand the context of these verses. And you'll find the, the basic historical event that took place when these verses were written back in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let me explain very quickly what was taking place. The nation of Israel was ruled by judges. The responsibility of the judge was to take the laws that God had given to Israel and to implement those laws in the nation. Well, we find that during the course of Israel's history, Israel began to reject the judges. They looked around and they saw all the other nations around them had kings. And so in 1 Samuel chapter 8, if you read that on your own, you'll find that Israel comes to Samuel and they ask Samuel to place a king over them instead of the rulership of the judges that they previously had had. Okay, you might say, well, what's the big sin in that? Well, here's the idea. The difference between a judge and a king is this. Remember we said a judge simply implemented the laws of God in the nation of Israel. A king would have the power to actually write his own laws. So when the Israelites were asking for a king, basically what they were saying was this. The laws of God aren't good enough for us. We need a king that can write his own laws because we need better laws than what God gave to us. I think we all can see now why that would be a sin. They were rejecting God's law, asking for man-made laws to replace God's law. And that's where the sin was at. Well, we find that in the following chapters in 9 through you know, chapter 11, things didn't go good with Israel at all. It got to the point the Lord took his blessings away from them. And here in verse number 19, they get to the point, they realize they're headed down a path of destruction. In verse 19, all the people said to Samuel, pray for your servants to the Lord your God, that we may not die. For we have added to all of our sins the evil of asking a king for ourselves. 
they understood. Because they had turned their backs on the law of God and looked to a man for their own laws, they were headed for destruction. And because of that, they came to Samuel now asking him to please pray for them that this evil would not befall them. We find principle number one here in verse number 19. How can we survive the fearful times of our life? Principle one. Always keep in mind to start with, at least at times, we ourselves cause the fearful times to come into our lives. This is the perfect case for Israel. They were fearful. But why? It was because of something they had done. So we need to be careful and watch our lives to be sure we're always doing what the Lord wants so we can never look back and say, you know, I caused this fearful time to come into my life. In verses 20 through 22, we find principle number two. That is this. Even if we have failed the Lord in times past, if we repent, we can begin again in service to the Lord, knowing he'll be with us. Watch 20 through 22. Then Samuel said to the people, Do not fear, you have done all this wickedness. Yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn aside, for then you would go after empty things which cannot profit or deliver, for they are nothing. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. As Christians, there are times we do fail the Lord. And at times, those failures do bring fearful times into our lives. Folks, even if you look back at your life and you see there was something you've done to bring a trial into your life, keep in mind, through sincere repentance where we turn from those sins and turn back to seeking the Lord, we can rest assured we're going to be forgiven of that sin. And no matter what we may face concerning the trial that's upon us, we know that our Lord will be with us. Okay, he promises that. Let's look at principle number three. We find that principle in verse number 23, the first part. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Now keep in mind, the entire nation of Israel were facing these problems. Samuel was a part of that nation. He was, even though he had not committed sin on his part, he was still feeling the results of the sin of the other Israelites. So Samuel now is going through a fearful time in his life as well. He can see where his nation is falling apart around him. But you notice what Samuel said? He said, look, I'm still going to be faithful in praying for you, asking the Lord to forgive you of your sin and to bless you. What do we learn from that? During the fearful times in our life, we should never become selfish. We should always be watching out for others. We should always be uh, placing our attention on others, trying to meet their spiritual needs. By doing that, it helps us to get through our fearful time of life because we're allowing the Lord to use us even in the midst of that trial we're facing. At the end of verse 23, we find principle number four. Listen to this. I will teach you the good and the right way. Not only did Samuel say he was going to pray for them during these times of fearfulness, but he said he was going to actually teach them the right way that they should go. Folks, as Christians, when we face different trials and fearful times in our life, do you know one of the greatest things we need to keep in mind? That trial we face is a tremendous opportunity for us to reach out to others. Folks, do you know the testimony it is when we face fearful times for us to continue to trust in the Lord and to look after the needs of others instead of the needs of ourselves? Do you know what a testimony that is to others? Man, if every Christian would simply look to seek to help other people during times of trial. That's our opportunity that we have as Christians during times of fearfulness. By us taking the time to help others, by us taking the time to share the word of the Lord with others, by us taking the time both with our voice and with our life to show other people the proper way to handle a trial, the Lord will bless us and the Lord will honor us because we'll be using the trial in our life 
to be a testimony and a witness to others. Look at verse number 24. This is principle number 5. Only fear the Lord. Folks, during times of trials, one of the greatest things to remember is how great the Lord is. Remember, He's in control of all things. We need to be in remembrance of the fact that even though things may look the worst, He's still in control. He's able to work miracles. He's able to change the entire situation if it's His will. But one way or the other we can count on for sure as Christians during times of trials. Either the Lord's going to take that trial off of us or if it's for our good, he'll allow that trial to continue upon us but he'll be with us every step of the way. We can count on the fact one way or the other the Lord's going to take care of us during this time of trial if we fear him. So we need to remember how great he is we need to remember that he's able to do all things and that he's constantly working on our behalf. Look at principle number six at the middle of verse 24. Serve him in truth with all your heart. What else should we do during times of trials? We should allow that trial to bring us closer to the Lord. As Christians, when the tr times of trials come, we need to concentrate on the Lord. We need to stay, spend more time in His Word. We need to spend more time in prayer. Again, like we said before, we need to spend more time being a testimony to others. All of these things bring us closer to the Lord during these times of trials. You know, always remember, whenever a Christian said, whenever a Christian says, well, you know, for some reason I'm just not as close to the Lord as I used to be, I'll guarantee you something. It's not because the Lord left the Christian, it's because the Christian left the Lord. During times of trials, we need to strive especially to have a close walk with the Lord and to do what's pleasing in His sight. And finally, principle number seven, the end of verse 24, for consider what great things He has done for you. During times of trials, we need to look back on our life and remember how the Lord has blessed us previously. We need to remember how the Lord has taken care of us, how the Lord has at times worked miracles in our life in the past, and remember, He can do that same thing again for us. He can work a miracle again. So as we look back, just like David did, if you remember before he faced Goliath, he said, the Lord delivered me from the lion, the Lord delivered me from the bear, surely the Lord will deliver me from this Philistine. David, as a shepherd boy, looked back to when a bear tried to attack his flock, and he remembered how the Lord delivered him from that bear, and he remembered how a lion tried to attack his flock, and he remembered how the Lord gave the lion into his hand, and he used those previous blessings to encourage his heart to faith Goliath the Philistine. So folks, keep in mind, that's a very precious truth. Always try to remember how the Lord has blessed you in the past, to receive encouragement now during the fearful times. Once again, I do want to thank you for sharing a moment of your day with me. Please keep in mind, if you would like a written record of this lesson, you're welcome to uh, go to my blog. You'll find that at settledinheaven.wordpress.com and please look for the lesson entitled, What a Thing Fear Is. Until next time, Lord bless you. And may your life be settled in heaven.